What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Before we get into this one, check out this shirt I'm wearing. That's right, Drift Roulette, round one, event exclusive t-shirt. Let me set the camera down, give you guys the full effect. Inspired by an old comic strip, this actually is a comic book character roulette from, I don't remember if it's DC or Marvel, but a big shout out to Bailey, AKA Cat Daddy. He's the one who designed this whole thing and it turned out really sick. If you guys want one, sign up as a driver down below. It is an option to add a t-shirt and a sticker that will kind of have the same style as this shirt or be at the actual event. If you show up as a spectator, I will have a few extra t-shirts. I definitely won't have a lot. So if you get there, be sure to find me and get one for yourself. I think these turned out sick. Let me know what you guys think. I hope to see you guys out at Apple Valley on June 3rd. That is coming up quick. So if you haven't signed up as a driver, be sure to do so. The link will be down below. Otherwise, I hope to see you out there as a spectator. As always, I will be giving ride-alongs and so will a lot of the other drivers. We have a really cool list of vendors coming out. We've got a food truck, a coffee stand. Logan from Define Wraps will be there. We'll be giving away a trailer, thanks to IE Trailer Repair. Nasty Gloves will be there. Andy's Tires will be changing tires all day. But anyways, I'm sure you guys have heard me talk enough about that event in pretty much every video, and that's because I am so excited to be hosting my own event. It's turning out to be a really cool one. I'm so happy that I've got so much support from you guys, and I think it's gonna be a really fun event. But anyways, I'm gonna change into a shirt that I don't mind getting dirty because we do have some more work to do on the Z. So let's get into it. Okay, I wanted to show you guys a little bit more detail on the shirt because I'm really stoked on how this came out. Okay, let's get to the video. All right, so if you have a Z or G and you have a cut bumper like I do, no rear bumper or a bash bar, or you've even just had the bumper off, you have seen this little black box right here. And if you're like me, you've probably wondered, what is that? Why is it there? And can I get rid of it? Because it's ugly. We're gonna dive into that today and I am going to get rid of it. Full disclaimer, that is part of your smog system. That is an EVAP canister or charcoal canister. And it's a little plastic box that has activated charcoal in it. And that charcoal soaks up gasoline vapors that escape the fuel tank. But the disclaimer is if you remove it, if you mess with it, if you do anything related to it, there's a very high likelihood your car will not pass smog. Now, depending on what state you live in, that can be an issue or it may not be an issue. I will also warn you by removing this, there is a chance that you will smell more raw fuel in the car as you drive. My car already smells like that since it has test pipes. Having no cats also makes the car smell like raw fuel, so it's not gonna bother me, but those are the disclaimers. Don't do this and then think your car is gonna pass smog, especially if you live in the state of California. This thing has long since been past the point of passing smog, so I'm definitely not worried about it now. Every day it gets closer and closer to being a full-blown race car and less of a street car. So I figure why not remove this ugly thing on the back, because I sure don't like looking at it, and it'll probably save a little bit of weight getting rid of it. Let's dive into what it actually takes to remove it, what you have to do to keep the car happy, and are there any benefits of actually getting rid of it, other than just the aesthetic of it being gone. All right, now in terms of benefits, there aren't really any other than just getting rid of some extra clutter on the back, a little bit of extra weight. You can actually clear up some wiring in the hatch because that's where the plug goes for that. And if you want to get crazy, you can actually remove the lines that go all the way to the front. I won't be doing that just because that's quite a bit of work. But other than that, there's not really a huge benefit. Like I said, I just don't like the way it looks off the back of my car. Now in terms of downsides to this, the biggest one is you won't pass smog, right? I already mentioned that. So if you live in a state that, that requires that or is really strict on that, you won't pass. The other downside is you will smell a little bit more of raw fuel. The main job of this thing is to scrub the fuel vapor smell out of the air. That's what that activated charcoal does. And it doesn't do that while the car's driving. It does that when the car's sitting. Or rather, that's when the vapors would be there and as it's driving there, Kind of just working their way out so you're not going to really notice it driving down the street but you may notice it sitting in at a stop sign or even having the car sit in your garage you might just smell it a little bit more so like i said i wouldn't recommend doing this if you daily drive your car and you need it to pass smog but in the case of this thing like i said it's getting closer and closer to being a race car it'll eventually end up with a different motor and 
a cage and no interior and all kinds of other stuff, so the smog is the least of my worries. I'd rather not have the ugly thing hanging off the back there. Plus this next event I'm gonna drive, I believe, is gonna have some K rails, and I already know I'm gonna wanna drag the bumper on that, and with the location of this thing, it's definitely in the line of areas that may get hit, and I don't really want it to blow up. I'd rather it just be taken off nicely and be thrown away <laughs> instead of having it shatter on the track and me have to kind of like ghetto fix it by plugging up some lines and things like that. So call it preventative maintenance, if you will. Now coming up under the car, it's pretty easy to see what needs to be removed. It starts with that metal shield that wraps around it. We've got two or three lines that go to it and then the actual plastic canister itself. So I'm gonna start by removing this metal shield. It's just held in with a couple of different 10 millimeter nuts and bolts. So we'll yank that off and see what we're working with. All right, with the metal shield out of the way, we can see what we're dealing with here. So we've got three different lines coming in. This one wire harness, uh, actually maybe there's two wire harness it looks like. And this canister that has, looks like three chambers. It's kind of an interesting looking thing. So we'll unplug these lines, unplug these harnesses, and then yank this canister out. Now another reason I wanted to remove that is because aside from it being unsightly, it is right behind the rear wheel, which is constantly turning at a high rate of speed, throwing chunks of rubber, dirt, debris, and other things right behind it. And that little box is getting absolutely blasted. And it has held on to a lot of dirt, a lot of tire, and a lot of other junk in that area. So it was definitely a dirty little spot. And I like to keep my car clean. I power wash the underside after every event. Maybe not like all the way under there, but you know, all the suspension components and a little bit of the engine bay. And I try to keep it clean. That way it's easy to work on whenever I do have to work on it. And that was always an area I couldn't clean because there's just so much junk in there. And it was always this little corner of crust and I'm happy to get it out of there. Anyways, I have it out, it's there on the floor. So I'm gonna to toss it on the scale and see how much weight we're saving. Again, that wasn't the priority here, but it's a small benefit. Again, all we did was remove these three hoses and these two little clips there, and then this thing came right out after I took out two more uh, bolts that held this metal tray on that the canister actually clips to. And of course, we have the metal shield as well. You can see how filthy that is. That's what I was talking about. All right, let's toss this on the scale. Seven pounds, 4.7 ounces. So call it seven and a half pounds. Decent little chunk off the very back corner of the car. Another benefit to getting rid of this whole thing, I had mentioned I wasn't gonna remove all the lines from underneath the car that go into the engine bay just yet. But when that time comes and I do that, the one specifically for that EVAP can is actually the biggest line underneath the car. And if you're ever gonna run bigger fuel lines on a Z or G chassis, you actually have to remove that in order to fit the bigger fuel lines there. So there's another benefit there. <laughs> For the wiring here, I just push this harness up through from underneath, and you can see here. So I'll just unclip it from this guy, and then I can take this little rubber grommet off. I'll probably clean this up and electrical tape it all together so it takes up less space. And then I can just zip tie it up out of the way, maybe like behind this little garnish or something. Uh, just so you don't see it, there's less stuff on the floor here. On road trips like Drift Week and the time I went out to Utah, I've had this trunk loaded up pretty good with spare wheels, tools, the jack, things like that. And it's all kind of getting thrown around. And it was definitely a concern that it was gonna tear up one of these wire harnesses. So anything I can do to tuck them up out of the way so I can just throw wheels in my trunk and not worry about it, definitely gets a thumbs up for me. There's the finished product there. I actually ended up de-looming it, re-wrapping it in electrical tape and zip tied it up out of the way on that little bracket down there. You can see we are left with a rather large hole there. For that, I actually ordered a factory rubber grommet plug from Nissan. I'll put the part number right here. If you wanna order that for yourself, it was like $3, I think. So that'll fix that little issue there and we should be good. All that's left to do now is to get under the car. I can pretty much get rid of the one vent line that goes all the way up to the engine bay. Again, I'm debating if I really wanna actually crawl under there and get rid of the entire line or if I just wanna cap it off here and call it a day. 
And then I have to take care of the actual vent from the tank. Again, that was the whole reason that thing was there is because the fuel tank does need to have some kind of vent in it. That way it doesn't get under vacuum as your engine is using the fuel. What most people do is they'll just put a little like breather filter on the end of it and just kind of tuck it up somewhere. So I'll probably end up going that route because it seems to be the easiest. But yeah, like I said, still debating if I want to take out that entire line that goes up to the front or not. I think I'm going to get under the hood and see exactly where it goes to and see if it's something I can easily reach. And if I can yank the whole thing out, might as well. Because like I said, it'll be in my way when it comes time to swapping this thing and putting bigger fuel lines in it. Which probably won't happen anytime soon, but it'll definitely happen. The following Thursday. All right, it's been a few days, but we're back to working on the Z because I have to finish up that EVAP canister delete that I was working on. So let's get under the car and see where we left off. All right, so we're under the car here and we have the three hoses that came off the EVAP canister. This big one here is just a vent hose. It's actually clipped into this frame rail here so we can unclip that and discard that. All right, so we got this big hose out of the way. Like I said, it was just held in with this funky little clip that was into the frame rail up there. So with that hose out of the way, we are left with these two here. Now this bigger one is going to be your gas tank vent. This is the one we need to keep. This hard, the soft line here goes to a hard line and then runs over and actually that way where it connects to the gas tank, kind of in the middle of the car. So we'll pick a good spot to cut that, probably use a little bit of this rubber line and then end up putting either just a vent or a check valve of some sort in there. Some people say you should put a check valve in just in case the car ever rolls over, it would prevent gas from spilling out. But if this thing rolls over, definitely gonna have other issues to worry about. That aside, this smaller one is going to be the vacuum line that actually comes off the intake manifold, which means this line is the one that runs from here all the way underneath the car and up into the engine bay. Now we can plug this one all the way in the engine bay and then remove this entire line, or we can just plug it here and call it a day. I haven't quite decided if I want to get rid of the entire line or if I just want to cap it back here and call it a day. Now, obviously the more stuff I can get rid of, the better. It's definitely nice to save weight and it would be great to make extra room if I did want to run bigger fuel lines. I think I talked about that in a previous clip. So it'll end up getting done one way or another. I just don't know if it's a job I want to tackle right now. So I'm going to start by chopping the vent line and getting a breather or a check valve on that. All right, I've pretty much got the fuel vent line taken care of and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let me show you guys what I came up with. So we've got our fuel vent line, the original hard line. I cut it right about here. If you're cutting this, use something like a sawzall and not a cutoff wheel because you don't want a bunch of sparks around a fuel line. This is the original hose I just cut way shorter. It's got a little bend in it. This is a one-way check valve. You can't actually see it because there's a P-clamp holding this thing up to the frame. And then this is just a little filter. I didn't really need a filter and a one-way valve, but I figured why not? And now it's nice and solid, not going anywhere. I'll probably spray paint this black just because I don't really like the chrome, but either way, I think that's a success. What's left to do now is to take care of this vacuum line. You can see I cut it just to get it out of the way because it ran up over this thing and it was really hard to deal with. So with it cut, I think it's going to be a little bit easier. I'm still debating pulling the whole line out or maybe just capping it right here and calling it a day. So the gas tank vent line is taken care of and I wanted to do a proof of concept on the other line before I spend all the time ripping that thing completely out of the car. So here's what we've got. So this is the vacuum line that goes to the EVAP canister, the one that was in the back of the car. It normally plugs into this line, which then runs up to this little solenoid, which then runs to the intake manifold. I capped that off. It's just a little vacuum cap right there. I'm gonna start the car up with that capped off. Make sure it runs good, that there's no issues, I didn't mess anything up. And as long as it is, I will proceed with ripping out the entire line and I'll probably make a better cap because I don't think that tiny little vacuum cap is gonna do well, at least not for long. Now, realistically, there shouldn't be any issues here. I really didn't mess with anything that would be vital, that would stop the car from running, but you never know. So I figured rather be safe than sorry and figure this out now while the majority of it's still intact. And then if we're all good, I'll get to tearing it out. All 
RIP headphone users. I forgot my exhaust was pointed basically right at the camera. So sorry for that one. But the car seems happy, no issues. It's funny, there's not even a new light on the dash, which I actually thought there would be. But I think we're good. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to rip the rest of that line out. There's no reason for it to be there now. I'll get a better cap on that and then we'll call this job done. Kind of crazy to me how happy this motor sounds. If you guys have watched some of the past videos, you know that I've had some real questionable oil changes with this thing. And it still makes perfect oil pressure. It sounds great, even on a cold start. Who knows how long it's gonna last at this point, but I'm sure happy that it sounds this good and I'm confident it's at least gonna last me through these next couple events that I've got lined up. I know I talked about that a lot in the last video, but as a quick reminder, this Saturday, May 27th, I will be at Speed Metal presented by Terra Crew. That's out in Atalanto. That's gonna be a really cool one. There's a lot of off-road racing and trucks and huge jumps and a drift demo in the middle of it all. The following Saturday, June 3rd, that is my own event, Drift Roulette. That's gonna be the first time I'm hosting an event and I'm really looking forward to it. The support has been amazing. I'm really hoping to see a lot of you guys out there. And then the next weekend, I think it's a Sunday, I'll have to double check, but it's on June 11th. I'm actually bringing this thing to a car show. It's the eighth annual Z Day out at Irwindale Speedway. And I was invited to be a guest there. I'm honored by that. I hope when I show up, they don't think, oh man, this car is way rougher than I thought because it is definitely not a show car, but that's gonna be really fun. It is a Z only car show festival kind of thing. It's gonna be really cool to be a part of. So if you're in the area, definitely come out. Anyways, enough talking. This job is just about done, so I'm gonna crawl under the car and get this last line out so we can call this done. Oh, there's no going back now. Got the line all disconnected and uh, hanging down. Just trying to see how I can get it out from where it goes up under the tank. Success! Well, hold on. Okay, that's better. So, got the line out from the engine bay all the way back to where it goes up and over the gas tank with the clips that hold that line to the chassis and just the way it's routed all the way up and over the tank, there's no real way for me to get it out while the gas tank's still in there. And it's definitely not worth dropping the tank for. So I'm gonna leave that little foot or so of line there and forget about it because there's nothing really else I can do. But hey, still got a good chunk of stuff out from this car. Let me show you what we ended up with. Long stretch of line, some little small pieces, hoses, clamps, random things here and there. Is any of that weight savings worth it? No, not really, but that's okay. It's a better peace of mind of me knowing that at least I did the best I can at getting all that unused stuff out. Now let's do a little recap here. So would I recommend this? Well, it really depends. Do you want your car to pass smog? Then no, I wouldn't recommend this. That's the biggest thing, right? Definitely don't do this if you need your car to pass smog because as I said in the beginning of the video, it won't if you remove this. Now this car already isn't gonna pass smog between being manual swapped and test pipes and exhausts and a bunch of other stuff. It just isn't gonna happen. And it's going further and further down the race car line anyways, so I'm not really worried about it. As far as the gas smell goes, this thing lives in the garage and everybody's biggest complaint when they delete these is that it smells like gas in their garage, right? Because the EVAP canister doesn't do anything while you're driving. There's no fumes to trap while you're driving. But when you are parked, that's when the fumes tend to accumulate. And so far I haven't smelled anything, even with this running, and then when I turned it off and still in the garage, there was no excess fumes. At least nothing more than there normally is. Again, with this car having no cats in it, it's got a bit of a raw fuel smell regardless, so I don't think there's gonna be anything worse than that. And I'm pretty used to that already, so no biggie there. The biggest reason I wanted to do this is just because of my rear bumper cut. And the fact that you could see that big black box hanging underneath the bumper, it was kind of an eyesore, at least to me. And I know the more and more events I drive, eventually I'm gonna drive one with walls and I'm gonna end up dragging this bumper against a wall. And the last thing I wanna do is blow that little box to pieces, make a mess on the track, make a mess for me, and have to fix this thing at the track. I'd rather it just be gone, totally out of the way, not have to worry about it. But anyways, that's enough talking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down below. Is this something you do on your car? Have you ever even thought about it? Or is it something you already did because you have a cool engine swap or a fully built race car or something like that? Either way, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I hope to see a lot of you guys out at one of the next couple events I'll be at. If you see me out there, come by, say what's up. 
maybe even get a ride along depending on which track day it is. Anyways, thanks as always for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.